noon, days after it started spreading. We've got team coverage and they've got the latest for us. A stranded driver shot on the city's east side. Now police want to know more about the person who pulled the trigger. We have details still ahead. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right He just said now. that the fire had grown bigger and it was moving a little bit faster. I've seen. We start this noon with a story that we've been following over the last several days. All the dry conditions we've been having leading to a massive fire in Medina County. At this hour, crews still working to get that blaze completely under control. More than a thousand acres scorched by the flames. And Governor Greg Abbott issuing a disaster declaration. And we have team coverage this noon. KSED anchor Stefania Jimenez is in Medina County and Garrett Berger is there as well. And Justin Horn, of course, standing by in the Weather Center, but we're going to start with Stephania. Well, good afternoon to all of you. Yes, we're live on FM 271, about two miles from the Medina River, where, yeah, that Dascoat fire is still burning right now as we speak. Now, I just want to step out of the way because what's behind me here are just a few units here. You also have a roadblock sign. These uh, Medina County deputies, along with DPS troopers, are just making sure that no one gets through the roadblock because, yes, evacuation orders still in place. We know that three homes have been destroyed, but... Here's some good news. There is reason to be optimistic. Last night, we told you the fire was 1,092 acres big, but it has not grown since then. The Forest Service says it's also 50% contained. Crews here are hopeful at this hour. Yeah, the winds are strong today, but the humidity also higher. And that's great news when it comes to firefighting because the fire just won't burn as aggressively when you have conditions like what you have here today. Now, just a reminder, this fire started Friday afternoon when a vehicle went up in flames. And yesterday, KSAT spoke with a woman who says that she saw the fire that started all of this. Listen to what she told us. They're pushing everybody back, closing roads off. Um, the fire department got there and they just, it, it just went massive from there. I mean, huge. Yeah, you can imagine what it was like to see that and you see how that fire really led to all of this. Now, crews here have been pulling out all the stops as aggressively as possible to fight this fire. And I'm going to refer back to the notes that I got from the Forest Service, which I spoke with just about 20 minutes ago. And they're telling me that on Saturday, when this fire was at its most aggressive, it had two air tankers, three single engine air tankers, three water scoopers, and four Black Hawk helicopters fighting this fire. And that was on top of the 100 firefighters who were there on the ground trying to put out this fire. Now, as I mentioned before, three homes have been destroyed, and that's one of the reasons that Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration. Listen to what he said. This disaster declaration, it accelerates uh, the capabilities for Medina County to be able to respond to this. So, you know, when you're here, you so have to feel for the people who have been evacuated, who were just standing by waiting to see when they could go back to their homes and see what's left. We mentioned before, three homes have been destroyed, but there are plenty of other people who haven't been allowed back into their homes since, what, Friday afternoon. And so you have a number of them standing by. Some of them have gone to evacuation centers, and for that, we're going to head on over to Holotus, to Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church. That's where our Garrett Berger joins us live. And Garrett, you spoke with a woman who was evacuated. What is she telling you? Well, before we spoke with her, we were speaking with the church as well about how this shelter that they've set up, Our Lady of Guadalupe Church here in Holotus, they set up this church They uh, as a shelter. They say about 10 to 15 people are staying here right now, though the number's kind of in flux, and they expect they may have to stay open for a few more days. People showing up with very little, you know, the clothes that they have, a few belongings, but most importantly, their lives, and in some occasions, their pets' lives, like one woman we spoke with. She had had a dog and six puppies with her. She and her husband fleeing the flames on Saturday, loading their dogs straight into their car and truck seats, their dog crate packed away in storage. Fortunately, they got two donated crates along the way, and they also started the evacuation with eight puppies, but were able to get two adopted so far. The couple was not able to bring all of their animals, though. My mind went blank, and I was trying to find the most important thing, you know, 
to, and that, I figured it was our lives. Now we have some chickens, but we opened the coop and we let them out and we didn't bring them. But, and our cats, we couldn't see them or find them. So they took off before we could get to them. Rodriguez says she's heard that two houses in their subdivision were burned up in the fire, though theirs was not. And she's also heard electricity is out in the area. Now, with the uncertainty over what the fire might do next, she doesn't know when they might be able to get back home. So the church will likely be home for at least one more night. Now, the church says they are allowing pets like Rodriguez's here. They just need to be kenneled. And they are accepting donations of crates or kennels so that people don't have to choose between their pets or staying somewhere safe. Live in Holotus at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Stephania. Garrett, thank you. Definitely a choice that uh, no one, no pet owner wants to make. Thank you for that live report. We have to mention, you know, the Forest Service is really at the helm trying to battle this blaze, working with several other state agencies really to keep this fire down. But you have to keep in mind that the Das Goat fire isn't the only fire that they're burning right now. We know that there's one in Kerr County, which is 90 percent contained. And there's another wildfire northeast of Brackettville, that one zero percent contained. So they definitely have their work cut out for them. But you know, the size and the strength of these fires really depend on a few things, the humidity, but also the winds. That's something that we spoke with the fire, the Forest Service about. And we also should check in on that with our friend, our meteorologist, Justin Horn, who's live in the studio along with Ursula and uh, and David. If you could just tell us, Justin, what the latest on that is, because a lot of people are paying very close attention to those winds, because that's what can determine determine whether this fire really gets stronger. That's a very good point. And you mentioned earlier humidity is higher today, so that's a big help. But we do still have the gusty winds, and that's why there's a red flag warning still in effect today, because any fire that's going right now is going to spread if we get those gusty winds. I want to show you the smoke plumes that we have here. And you heard Stephanie mention these fires. Now, I will pass along the Texas Forest Service just updated this fire in Medina County now 70 percent contained. So this is great news. Looks like it's getting better and better. You go out to Kenny County, that's where it is 0% contained, and we are still have a smoke plume, likely a smoke plume. This is one of our computer models showing spreading, showing that smoke spreading north. Also, the Crooked Creek fire there in Kerrville, 90% contained. So it's that uh, one out near uh, Kenny County that we're going to watch. And yes, we'll talk about the aquifer here in just a little bit. It's also falling, just showing that the, the, it is still very, very dry here across South Texas. We mentioned that red flag warning. In effect for the air, entire area, not so much for the dry air because humidity has returned, but for those gusty winds, which may gust as high as 25, even 30 miles per hour. We've had clouds this morning here over San Antonio. Those are starting to shrink a little bit. We're going to get sun this afternoon, and the forecast calls for mostly sunny skies, I think, as we get into the afternoon. Temperatures will jump into the 80s, so another warm one, 85 by 6 o'clock, 82 by 7 p.m. And there are those gusty winds we were talking about. Uh, and look for mostly clear skies tonight. Now tomorrow, a chance for rain, and boy, could we use it. We're going to time it out for you and let you know what we can expect coming up tomorrow night, coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you so much, Justin. A lot of attention on all of that, especially with Fiesta coming up as well. New this noon, meantime, a kidnapping investigation now underway. Police say that someone grabbed a woman and took her to San Antonio. She's now safe. However, police want to find this person. They think he may know something that could help them find whoever is responsible. The surveillance image taken in the 1600 block of Vance Jackson Road. Officers tell us the man was driving a white four door sedan, possibly an Audi at the time. Police say that they started investigating after the victim called them back on March 1st to report that she had been kidnapped. If you know something that can help police solve the case, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. San Antonio police want to know who left a stranded driver in need of even more help. They say someone shot that man as he waited for roadside assistance outside an east side business. The shooting happened late last night on South WW White Road near East Houston. And as Katrina Weber tells us, police are trying to determine if the victim and shooter knew each other. A call for help brought police and paramedics to the parking lot of an east side sandwich shop. There in the 300 block of South WW White, they found a man in need inside his car with gunshot wounds in his chest and shoulder. Police say a woman with a 33-year-old victim was not hurt, but was clearly shaken. 
They believe the pair had road trouble, a flat tire, after 11.30 last night, and originally stopped to wait for help with that. Instead, someone shot the man. Although police found the victims outside that Subway restaurant, they say it actually happened a couple doors down. The victims say they were at this gas station at the time. Police say the couple was at the Valero waiting for roadside assistance when a car pulled up and someone got out. They say the man walked toward that person who then fired, critically wounding him. Police were not able to track down the shooter. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Still to come this half hour, the Spurs are on the road, traveling up the standings. Chaos and destruction continuing in Ukraine as the war enters a second month. How Ukraine's president continues talking about a potential peace deal with Russia. We want to bring you the latest now on the war in Ukraine. It's now entering its second month with Russian forces stalled, but pummeling Ukraine cities. And President Biden's aides are scrambling to walk back his impromptu declaration that Vladimir Putin, quote, cannot remain in power, end quote. ABC's Terry Moran is tracking it all from Lviv. Hard fighting continues across this country. Ukrainian forces are now launching counterattacks and they claim to have retaken several towns in strategic locations. Russian forces, they're stalled in some places, but they are pressing attacks and gaining some ground out in the east and continuing bombardments across this country, including here in Lviv, uh, where they hit an oil depot and a tank facility over the weekend. Meanwhile, President Zelensky of Ukraine is talking about a peace deal. He gave an interview to independent Russian journalists. It did not air on Russian state TV, but in it, Zelensky says he would do a deal if Russian forces withdraw to those territories they occupied before the war began out in eastern Ukraine and Crimea. Uh, as in exchange, Ukraine would pledge neutrality, not join NATO, but the whole thing would have to be guaranteed, Zelensky says, by Western powers, likely including the United States. All this in the wake of President Biden's trip to Europe and that line that he delivered at the end of his speech in Warsaw, in which he said that Vladimir Putin cannot be allowed to remain in power. The White House quickly walking that back, saying the U.S. has no plans to remove Vladimir Putin from the Kremlin, no plans for regime change. Terry Moran, ABC News, Lviv, Ukraine. Outside with live cam, it's pretty nice out there right now, but as you've seen, we have some fires west of San Antonio, which should be a warning to everybody. It is bone dry. Yes, and rain, we need it so bad. There is a chance coming up tomorrow night, and then after that it gets windy and dry yet again. And the aquifer is a perfect example of this, uh, this drought we're really going through. Down nearly a foot today to 653.2 and dropping. In your pollen count, oak has jumped up. It's in the high category today. Highest level we've seen so far this season, 1,850. Molds are moderate, 640. Hackberry and mulberry both are low. We're going to talk about that rain chance. Time it out, let you know how much rain we could expect from this storm system. Come here. Well, welcome back here. You know, we're live on FM 271, about two miles from the Medina River, where the Dascoat fire continues to burn. But I come to you, my friends, right now bearing some good news. First, the fire hasn't grown. When we spoke to you yesterday, we told you that the fire was 1,092 acres big. It hasn't grown since then, so that is wonderful news coming from the Forest Service. And the Forest Service is feeling pretty good about this. Today is a better day than what we had during the last three. We know this is day four of this fire. The winds are strong, but you know what also is strong? The humidity. So that's great news for battling this fire. And the Forest Service says that if we, if tomorrow is similar to today as far as conditions, winds, humidity, things like that, then it is likely that the evacuation order will be lifted soon and that people will finally be able to go back into their homes. We know that three homes have been destroyed so far. That's one of the reasons why Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration yesterday and what that should do is free up some money and resources for the people who have seen damage as a result of this fire. But things are definitely looking up. 
We spoke with the Forest Service, as I just said, and they are saying that things, um, that conditions obviously are improving, but they are, of course, telling people to be very careful because we are in the midst of a fire season, and it's likely that even when this fire eventually goes out, there will be another, there will be a few more fires that we'll have to worry about in our area because of the dry climate that we've been experiencing. But for now, I'll send things back on over to you and we'll check back in with you, Steve, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Ursula and David in just about 10 minutes. Thank you, Stephanie. And, and she brings up a really good point um, because Justin was just mentioning another fire in Brackenville right yep. now. Yeah, well, and it's it's in Kinney County to be exact, and it's a northeast side, so it uh, it is still going now, and there's some dry air still out to the west. Uh, we can see that the cloud cover, any cloud cover we have, is really starting to dissipate, and then we had some shade this morning, which was nice uh, from that uh, from that sun. It's been pretty warm last couple of days, but those clouds really beginning to dissipate some, and we're going to see mostly sunny skies this afternoon as far as temperatures go. Well, we're in the uh, 70s in most locations. 75 Port SA, 70 in Boverde, 75 New Braunfels, 76 where it is sunny now in Seguin. Still some 60s underneath the clouds, but those numbers will change here soon now that the sun's popping out. I want to show you time lapse. A lot of clouds this morning. It's a welcome sight, I suppose. Uh, but those clouds, again, starting to yield to blue skies. And I do think that we'll see another round of morning clouds coming up tomorrow. 72 at the airport. Dew point is at 59, and that number is so important, as is the humidity at 64%. Both of these numbers where you would want to see them this time of year. That helps with the fire threat. South-southwesterly winds still gusty, though, at 11 miles per hour. Dew points are in the 50s and 60s, even out uh, where some of those fires are as far west as uh, Kinney County. Uh, and now the terrain's going to play a role there in Kinney County, too, because you're talking hills and uh, elevation changes that you'll have to deal with as they did somewhat in Medina County. Uh, but the good news is humidity has spread west. The one problem we're still having are the gusty winds. Still seeing gusts now to 20 to 25 and that uh, will still push some of these fires still help to spread them some. Uh, the latest smoke plume forecast well, we've gotten rid of most of the smoke from the Das Goat fire there as it is starting to get contained. Same story around Crooked Creek. Uh, but that fire there in Kinney County still may throw some smoke in the direction of, say, Rock Springs or places north, north until they can get that contained. Hopefully we can get a little bit of rain on this tomorrow. And then as we get into Wednesday, fire threat comes right back into play as dry air and gusty winds come back into the picture. Red flag warnings in effect today purely because of the winds and because of the ongoing fires. Uh, winds gusting 20 to 25. Dew points. They stay elevated today, tomorrow, but by Wednesday they start to fall off. And Wednesday, Thursday, that's when we start to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. That's when we could be looking at fire danger yet again if the winds stay gusty. Here's a look at our future cast and for our prospects for rain. They are there, but I'll tell you, they aren't great. As uh, we get into tomorrow, this is 5 o'clock tomorrow, some off and on cloud cover. More clouds tomorrow than today. And then by tomorrow night, this is actually early Wednesday morning, this is 5 a.m. Here comes our broken line of showers and storms. I'm afraid it's going to limp in here. We are on the southern edge of things, the southern edge of this energy. So only a 30% chance of rain, and this will be quick moving. And then through here, and then we get gusty winds and dry air again on Wednesday. I don't think this is going to really help us a whole lot. Rainfall potential, we're talking less than a tenth of an inch, likely for most of us. If you're to the north and east of San Antonio, maybe, maybe two tenths of an inch. So this system isn't going to do a lot to help us. And unfortunately, it will bring some gusty winds on Wednesday. 86, 84 Thursday as Fiesta officially began. Some cool mornings as we head into the weekend. And maybe a little bit more humidity by Saturday and Sunday. There's an outside chance of a shower Sunday, Saturday and Sunday too. But as of right now, we're going to leave it out of the forecast. We appreciate that sort of because of Fiesta, but no other reason. Right. Yeah. The Spurs making their playoff push. It continues tonight in Houston. A look at that coming up. And the Spurs start the final two weeks of the regular season tonight in Houston against the worst team in the NBA, the Rockets. San Antonio has eight games left to try and get that 10th or maybe even the ninth play-in spot. 
They start their push a game behind the Lakers in the West. Yes, a game behind the Lakers and a game and a half behind the Pelicans. Pelicans beat the Lakers last night. New Orleans is now in the ninth spot. They have won three out of their last four out of their last five. The Spurs are coming off a big win over the Pelicans Saturday night. DeJounte Murray had a triple double in that one, 107 103. He says the Spurs really have to bear down now. We want to get in bad. Uh, you know, I'm here to say it. Uh, we want to get in. The players really want to get in. Uh, and, you know, we're going to come out and try to approach it that way. You know, obviously, you might have a great start, you know. Uh, you might have a slow start, you know, but no matter what, just play 48 minutes and, uh, you know, try to get a win. So they are peaking at the right time. Three in a row, four out of their last five. Tip off tonight is at 7 o'clock, a little early since they're in Houston. Spurs and Rockets highlights for you on the night beat. All right. Thank you. And we'll be right back. We want to head back out to Medina County where those dry conditions are doing nothing to help crews trying to fight those fires. That's right. Stephanie Jimenez has been out there all day and we've been out there for several days. Uh, Stephanie, what is the latest? Well, this is day four. Of, of this fire. As you know, this started on Friday afternoon when a vehicle went up in flames and we know that the Dascote fire has so far grown to 1,092 acres, but there is some good news in all of this and that's the fact that this fire has not grown since yesterday. Yesterday it grew by 100 acres, but since then it's been largely contained by firefighters and that is wonderful news. We know 100 firefighters are on the ground right now trying to fight this. Another thing that is helping them right now is that it is pretty humid outside and that is definitely favorable whenever you are fighting a fire. But, you know, I just mentioned that, you know, this started on Friday afternoon. Some people were forced from their homes when this happened. They've been waiting anxiously to get back into their homes to see what's left of their homes. You have to remember that whenever you have a fire like this, it's not just the actual flames that could destroy your home. You're also talking about smoke damage. That's a possibility that that, you know, you don't want that to get into your home either. So far, we've been told three homes have been destroyed, but there are a lot of people on standby waiting to go in to see what's left of their properties. We know that some evacuation centers have been set up, so we're going to go on over to Holotus. That's where Our Lady of Guadalupe Catholic Church is. It's been set up as uh, an evacuation site. Our Garrett Berger joins us there alive with the latest. Garrett. Well, Stephanie, right now, these guys opened up on Saturday and the numbers kind of been in flux, but they say about 10 to 15 people are here at their makeshift shelter now, and they expect that they could get more over the coming days. Now, the church has converted religious classrooms and the parish hall into a makeshift shelter. Now, it's not clear how long they may have to stay open, but quite possibly a few days. A church spokesman said they're here for whatever evacuees need. No matter you know what your situation is, you're welcome to come here. You're welcome here, um, whether you need a place to sleep, or you need a good meal, a uh, few drinks. Um, we may be even taking donations for clothes if it comes to that, if it's been a few days and people don't have a change. Um, we're here for however we can be. The church says some people are showing up with their pets, which are allowed as long as they're kenneled. And they're accepting donations of crates and kennel to make sure that people don't have to make any hard choices between a safe place to stay and their pets. Now, the church says they are also accepting sports drinks, sodas and individually wrapped snacks. And they could also use volunteers in the evening hours after seven o'clock. Now, they're posting information on what they need on their Facebook page. You can follow them there or give them a call. Live at Our Lady of Guadalupe Church in Holotus, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. David, Ursula. Thank you so much, Garrett. Appreciate that. It has uh, been a very long weekend for those folks over there. Meantime, here in San Antonio, I, I, I know at least in Bernie, there were reports that some of that ash was falling in, uh, in Kendall County. Yeah, there was some smoke there. We, and thankfully, the smoke from that fire, the Medina County fire, has really calmed down. We still have a smoke plume out west of that Kinney County fire. Something we'll be watching in the coming days, but hopefully they can get some of these fires under control. I want to show you a picture, switching gears a little bit, on our uh, KSAC Connect. 
of blue bonnets, or at least one blue bonnet. Uh, my patio blue bonnet, as uh, Mary says. Very pretty. We're starting to see some wildflowers show up here with uh, we need some more rain, but we're starting to see some of them show up on the area roadways. Always nice to see this time of year. And Mary, we appreciate it. Let's go to the satellite picture and show you the clouds we had this morning very quickly shrinking. We're getting a lot of sun now and we're going to see a lot of sun into the afternoon, which will obviously boost temperatures. You look across the state. There's a lot of 80. It's already showing up 80 in Corpus Christi, 81 Brownsville, 80 in San Angelo, 80 in Midland. It's a warm and generally dry day for for most of us. Now we do have a storm system that'll be coming in from the west and we're hoping that that will generate some showers. We've also noticed that the oak numbers have jumped up. It is oak season. It's 1850 today and high. It's the highest number we've seen so far this season and you can expect these numbers to continue to jump up. We'll see uh, that yellow dust on a lot of things. Our forecast temperature this afternoon 85 here in San Antonio and there will be some upper 80s to the south. But places like Somerset will be near 85 Fair Oaks Ranch 82 85 down there in Elmendorf and then by tomorrow morning we fall back down into the 60s. Not a not a cool morning. It'll be somewhat humid and we'll get more clouds building in yet again and then our chance of rain arrives late tomorrow night early Wednesday. We'll look at that once again and uh, talk about the aquifer too coming up in just a few minutes guys. Thank you so much, Justin. The wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas might be questioned by the House Select Committee investigating January 6th. That, according to unnamed sources, Thomas is a conservative activist who recently said that she attended a pro-Trump rally prior to the January 6th siege on the U.S. Capitol, but she claims she did not take part in the planning of that rally on the infamous day itself. However, it was revealed that Virginia Jenny Thomas sent more than two dozen texts to then White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. She reportedly asked him to keep fighting to overturn the 2020 presidential election. A spokesperson for the select committee did not specifically comment on Thomas, but said no one has been ruled out of getting a subpoena. The Food and Drug Administration could authorize the COVID-19 booster shot for Americans over 50 years old as soon as tomorrow. The FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee was expected to consider the additional booster shot proposal in the coming days. But new data from Israel provides new evidence that a fourth coronavirus vaccine offers enhanced protection against severe illness. Experts say technically a fourth dose is currently available for anyone who says they need one because they are immunocompromised. The action by the White House would not amount to an official second booster recommendation, but would give everyone over 50 the option. TikTok now facing another lawsuit over working conditions for its content moderators. They're claiming the job traumatized them, so they're suing the short form video platform and its parent company, ByteDance, for negligence. Contractors Ashley Velez and Reese Young say their work involved reviewing, quote, unfiltered, disgusting, and offensive content, end quote. The basis of their lawsuit is their claim that TikTok failed to provide adequate care to protect moderators and support them after reviewing that kind of content. Another contractor filed a similar lawsuit in December. A TikTok spokesperson said at the time that the company, quote, offers a range of wellness services so that moderators feel supported mentally and emotionally. The Oscars still causing a lot of chatter this afternoon. That's because of some tense moments between a nominee and a presenter all over a joke. We've got to look at that moment coming up after the break. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. Russian crude oil price is now higher than ever. That is exports by sea levels drop to new lows. Exports of crude oil have, from Russia have now dropped about one fourth since Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, some experts are warning that the shortage could get worse, meaning that higher costs and energy uncertainty will happen around the globe. Meanwhile, 48,000 union grocery workers for Kroger and Albertsons owned stores voted yes to authorize a strike over the weekend. They're seeking higher wages. Another round of negotiations is scheduled to start on Wednesday. And Google issued an emergency security update for Chrome users, instructing users to update their browsers, all to make sure they're not vulnerable to an attack. Google now will not be able to offer technical details until the vulnerability is fixed. 
And that's your Cheddar News update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in New York. Now to the Oscars and that shocking moment that stunned the audience there in the theater and all across the world. Will Smith slapping comedian Chris Rock after he told a joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. But less than an hour after that violence on stage, Smith was back on stage, then accepting award for best actor. ABC's Rita Roy has the latest. It was a room full of Hollywood's biggest stars, but this was no scene from a movie. Oh, wow. Will Smith slapping wow. Chris Rock on stage at the Oscars after Rock joked about Smith's wife Jada's shaved head. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right. Jada, who's been candid about her struggle with hair loss and alopecia, appears less than amused. Smith seems to laugh it off, but then gets out of his seat and up on stage. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. This explicit version aired on some international feeds. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. I'm going to. Less than an hour later, Smith tearfully accepted the award for best actor, apologizing to the Academy, but not to Rock. I want to apologize to the Academy. I want to apologize to my all my fellow nominees. Love will make you do crazy things. Smith took to Instagram, making light of the slap, commenting, you can't invite people from Philly or Baltimore nowhere. Despite the drama, history was made on this year's Oscar stage. Ariana DeBose winning Best Supporting Actress for her role as Anita in West Side Story. A queer, openly queer woman of color and Afro-Latina who found her strength in life through art. There is indeed a place for us. Oh, yeah. The Oscar goes to... Okay, Coda. Coda won Best Picture and Best Supporting Actor for Troy Kotzer, who's just the second deaf actor ever to win an Oscar. I'll never forget that my father said that sign language is such a beautiful language. It's a gift to the world. And back to Will Smith, the LAPD tells ABC News Rock declined to file a police report after the slap. The Academy issuing a statement saying it does not condone violence of any form. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. That story's going to be around a while. A long, long time. And meantime, we've been in this kind of weather far too long as well. Yeah, we, we need some of those clouds to bubble up and give us some rain. There is a little bit in the forecast, as we've discussed, coming up tomorrow night. 72 so far today, 61 was the low this morning. Records are 129, so it shows you that we can still see some extremes this time of year. We're coming up on our latest last freeze, though, so we're pretty much out of the woods, I think, when it comes to freezes. Uh, we are going to see some warm temperatures next couple days, too. We'll talk about it coming up. This day in Fiesta history is powered by the Silverado and your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. Before Fiesta begins, you need a blessing and some music. The annual Mariachi Mass blesses all Fiesta royalty, commissioners, and participants before they embark on their commitments. The Fiesta Mass takes place at the historic San Fernando Cathedral downtown, and it's televised nationally each year. The beautiful sounds of mariachis are also celebrated during the Fiesta Mariachi Festival. Since 1972, emerging talent from area high schools and colleges have joined professional groups to perform along the Riverwalk. So find your favorite spot and enjoy this free floating concert. Real quick, I want to remind people that Stephanie Jimenez and Garrett Berger are going to stay near that Medina fire, and they're having more reports for us, the latest. It sounds like things are headed in the right direction, at least, but they'll let us know this afternoon on KSO 12 News at 5 and again at 6. So they're staying there with that fire. And hopefully the weather is going to continue to improve in, in at least the humidity department. I think so. Uh, and the Texas Forest Service, by the way, now has that fire there in Medina County. It's 70 percent contained. So we're headed in the right direction. And very rarely do we start weather with the dew point map. But it is just so important today. It has been so dry. And finally, these dew points, the humidity is coming up. When you start to see dew points near 60, that puts us back in the muggy territory. And it does make a huge difference when it comes to fighting these fires. Now, we still have some gusty winds. But with numbers like this for the next couple of days, this is going to help firefighters uh, really uh, a whole lot. So uh, we'll see these dew points stick around 60 today. Uh, now we are getting those gusty winds out of the south gusting the 22 right now. We'll see some gusts 20 to 25 throughout the afternoon. That's why there still is a red flag warning in effect just because with these gusty winds, any fires that are currently burning still can spread 
uh, just probably not as fast with the humidity that we have at the moment. Let's talk rain chances because rain is what we really need. Uh, right now we have a 30% chance coming up tomorrow night. And then maybe another very, very small chance on Saturday. That's it. That's all we can give you. But we're hoping Tuesday night we can at least get a little bit of rain in here. Any little bit helps. You look at the aquifer, it is dropping like a rock. We're at 653.2 today, and that number is still going down. The 10-day average is 655.2. Of course, this is the important number. Once this gets down to 650, then we're talking potentially stage two restrictions. We don't want to get there. So at the moment for you at home, it means once a week watering before 11 a.m. or after 7 p.m. with our stage one restrictions in place right now. Outside, we've got blue skies, mostly blue skies, 75 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 59, as we said, and southerly winds at about 13. Any cloud cover that we did have has gone away. So it's going to be a mostly sunny afternoon. There are some clouds along the coast, but uh, the, the morning stratus deck is pretty much uh, just disappeared. Temperature 71 at Holotus, 73 at Boulevardi, 69 Canyon Lake, 75 in New Braunfels, and then you're starting to see some 80s on the map in places like Divide, Pleasanton, where it is 82 at this hour. The wind gust forecast again keeps us in that range of 20 to 25 mile per hour wind gust, but even going into tonight, and tomorrow will be another windy day. It has felt like it has been a pretty windy spring. We've had several days here. We've just had these gusty winds and it just has to do with the, the weather pattern and the way it's been setting up, but it continues to bring those gusty winds and we're going to get those again Wednesday too behind our next storm system. So let's look at our rain chances here. This is tomorrow morning, seven o'clock. We've got some morning clouds, maybe a little bit of drizzle mixed in there and then clouds stick around for a large portion of tomorrow. That'll bring temperatures down just a little bit. Then as we get into Wednesday, this is 5 a.m. So overnight Tuesday into early Wednesday, here comes a broken line of showers and storms. We are going to be on the very tail end of things, a 30% chance of rain. By Wednesday morning, 7 o'clock, gusty winds and dry air start to filter in behind this system. And the rest of your Wednesday, we'll still see temperatures in the 80s, but it's going to be a windy and sort of dry day. And we'll have to look out for fire concerns yet again because I don't think we're going to get much rain out of this system. Right now we're projecting less than a tenth of an inch, maybe two tenths of an inch if you're up towards, say, Canyon Lake, New Braunfels, San Marcos, and northeast towards Austin. Here's the extended forecast. 85 tomorrow, 86 on Wednesday. 84 Thursday as Fiesta officially gets underway, and some pretty good weather as we get into the weekend. Warm and a little more humid by Saturday and Sunday. We'll be right back. This is the season the Viscount intends to find a wife. <laughs> you honestly just did that? I believe I did. It's season two of Bridgerton and romance is in the air, or is it? Lord Anthony Bridgerton, played by Jonathan Bailey, believes himself to be a sensible man when it comes to securing a match. I've already compiled an index of the season's eligible misses and have arranged interviews. But he's got to deal with some formidable foes to his unromantic plans, including his mother and Lady Danbury. Violet is over the moon that, that he wants to get married until she realizes that he has no intention of finding love. Love will not come into his marriage at all. That he, he wants it to be a contract and a duty to uphold the family name. And this devastates her. Your Majesty, may I present Miss Kate Sharma and Edwina Sharma. The Sharma sisters are the newest ladies to arrive in the ton for the annual marriage mark known as the season. Anthony has his eye on the younger sister, but the oldest has learned of his plans and wants to keep him as far away as possible. I think the heartbeat of the whole thing for Kate was Edwina and putting her family first. Um, and it made it really easy, to be honest. And right complicated things that the characters do in Bridgerton they, it's because they believe it's the right thing to do Absolutely. and the idea I think that's true of life isn't it yeah. that if you hold a secret you think you're doing the right thing it doesn't mean that you're like I'm yeah. holding something mm. back from someone else and then there's the all seeing all knowing Lady Whistledown she gladly reports on everyone's problems but this season she's got a few of her own she's both flying high on the fact that everyone in London loves her and is obsessed with their gossip column and thinks she's so clever and witty but also then, you know, having her real life where nobody knows that that's her reality and having to sort of lie to the people she loves the most and how like those things, she's a lot of spinning plates that she's sort of struggling to keep them all going. What happens when duty is in conflict with the heart's true desire? In Hollywood, I'm Alicia Stanford. Still hot. 
Okay. Yeah. The okay. countdown to Fiesta is on. <laughs> And SA Live is racing out to all the Fiesta fun for you, so they have an encore episode today. All right, so Mike and Fiona have some monster meatballs, road trips, and a giant rabbit on the show today. Oh, it is Monday. Fiesta is just a couple of days away, and we are out shooting a lot of fun stuff for Fiesta, so we have got a great spring episode for you today. All right, first up, Max and Louie's yes. New York Diner. You know them for their bagels, their sandwiches, and over-the-top menu items, but today we're exploring their dessert options, Woo plus a king-size meatball dish. And that is a really, really good meatball. And then Jen's going to take a Texas trip into a spot near Austin where you can stay at a farmhouse brewery and you might even run into some cute little goats. It's a brand new Fiesta event. We take you to a local restaurant with some very special four-legged guests of honor. And speaking of four legs, a very special guest hops onto our set. Meet the giant rabbit that you can have brought to your next birthday party or Easter gathering. And she's a real San Antonian this woman's Women's History Month. Meet the local mom of four who turned bodybuilder and it changed her life. Wonderful, wonderful story. All right, back to that giant rabbit and he's gonna be accompanied by some friends. So the question for the day is, if you could own an exotic animal, what would it be? Ooh. Would it be a snake? Would it be a giant rabbit? Would it be a tiger? something like that. Let us know at SA Live KSAT on Facebook and Twitter. What exotic animal you don't, if you could. Jaguar. <laughs> A jaguar. <laughs> Welcome back. 76 degrees, 85 this afternoon. Lots of sun. Gusty winds, but more humidity. 85 Tuesday. We'll get... Uh, Lots of clouds tomorrow and a chance for some showers and a few storms late Tuesday night, early Wednesday. Then it turns windy, windy and dry on Wednesday. Uh, gusts 35, maybe even 40 miles per hour. And then we get up to uh, 84 Thursday as Fiesta officially gets underway. A little more humidity by the weekend. We're going to be keeping a close, such a close eye on this fire situation too, uh, especially as we get into Wednesday, guys. Definitely good advice there. Thanks, Justin. So what exotic animal would you have if you could have an exotic animal? Mm, I don't know. I was at the zoo last week, and I was kind of taken by the jaguars. The jaguars? See, I just thought you were an alligator since you're from Louisiana. But, you know. <laughs> They're not cuddly at They're all. They're not. No. Okay. Justin? Oof. I don't know. What about you? Tiger. Definitely. A lion. What a lion. He likes it. LSU like, Tigers. Saw that? It's a live show. The <laughs> live starts right. Now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square, this is SA Live. Hello and happy Wednesday. Never too early for a visit from the Easter Bunny or maybe just a cute giant rabbit. You'll meet this fellow in just a few minutes. Good afternoon. I'm Jen Tobias Strusky filling in and for Fiona. I knew they were going to give Mike a hard Michael's time. <laughs> No, I, got all the pla I got all the plastic out of there. It's just two big pieces, so we're good, we're good to go there, David. So, but thank you anyway. And I'm like Osterhage. And all right, so you saw that that giant Flemish rabbit there, and it's one of the exotic animals. It got us to thinking: mm -hmm. if you could have any exotic animal, what would it be? Yeah, uh, what is it? The cockatoo? Those, oh, okay. Because their personalities are so adorable. Mm. But I don't think I could ever really have one. So what about you? I would think a jaguar. I think they are the most beautiful of the big cats. Yeah, no, they are. They're just beautiful. absolutely gorgeous. They so. can be nice and friendly, right? All, yeah. If only. <laughs> and we're, we've got a whole bunch, about a half dozen exotic animals coming yep. up a little bit later on in the show. But let us know, and maybe we'll see your answers uh, later on. Yep, just tag us on SA Live, or on Kesa, at SA Live Kesa on Facebook and Twitter. We may share those photos. All right, if you can't take a trip this spring break. How about getting a taste of the Big Apple right here at home? Yes, indeed. Drew oh, Glick, yeah. who is the owner of Max and Louis New York Diner, is here to share some tips on using a KitchenAid <laughs> blender as well as making a really good dessert. Good to see you, sir. Thank you for having me. It's been a while. I owe you a plastic bowl. So. We are not doing a YouTube of Michael using the uh, KitchenAid. Don't worry. It's another show in itself. Okay, what are we making today here? So we're making banana pudding. Now, when I think of New York Deli, I don't think of banana pudding necessarily. Well, 
It's a, it's a diner thing, we'll say. It's comfort okay. food. It's yes. diner. It doesn't necessarily mean New York, this particular item, mm -hmm. but it's a real comfort food. You yes. go to any diner around the country and you'll find some version mm. of banana pudding. And you said in the other restaurant you had before, Max and, and, Max and Louis, that this was the number one dessert. It was uh, right? Our banana pudding was the number one selling item. It was on the cover of magazines in San Antonio. Whoa. It was... Okay. Uh, it was popular to say the least. And what's, what's the secret? Uh, freshness, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, we make the uh, the uh, Italian meringue, art, you know, from scratch. I mean, everything is from scratch. I don't grow the bananas or make the, the <laughs> okay. Nabisco Nilla wafers. Now, which you got to use Nilla wafers because, like we were saying, right. nothing tastes like that. So, usually when I've made it at home, it's just vanilla pudding. What is? This is our pastry cream. So, it's okay. a homemade mm -hmm. pastry cream that we use for this. We also use it for our uh, eggclairs and our cream puffs. Uh, okay. Uh, and then we, you know, put the bananas that kind of give it its banana, bananariness. Bananariness? Yeah, it's a new <laughs> word. Like word so. And, and it's a what new makes word. this uh, an Italian meringue? Well, it's just uh, the vanilla, the um, just the, the the method of mm -hmm. making it. Look at how pretty that is. You got oh, it perfect. Yeah. I forgot to look yeah, at the did. toasting. The toasting. <laughs> the toasting. Keep going. Okay, okay. Yes, Keep yes, going. Yes. You're, you're, uh, you're, you're doing great. <laughs> okay, Don't forget so, your banana. Did you put bananas in there? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it could be Nilla wafer pudding. Yeah, it's between it the two of us today. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, forgot yeah, the cream. Yeah. I forgot We're the bananas. We're just a thousand here. Combine so. it together, you got the perfect Okay, one and here. some of the other great desserts that you uh, have at your place? <laughs> oh, well, we brought today, of course, mm. New York cheesecake, mm -hmm. uh, which we uh, make right here in San Antonio. We have a great bakery in town that uh, makes it to our specifications. This is an Italian cream. We'll talk about in the next segment our new Italian menu. So this is a perfect fit for that. And then we, you know, bake our Linzer tarts and our uh, black and white cookies and ode to the Seinfeld, mm -hmm. you know, days. For those, those who are don't actually, know yeah. about the, the black and white cookies, can you yeah. describe that? That Because it's like a cakey, a it's like a cakey cookie, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, so the bottom is, is like a cake. Mm -hmm. It's got a little bit of lemon zest in it, so it's spongy. And then this is vanilla and chocolate ganache. Mm. Have you ever had one of these before? Uh, you know uh, I have. Uh, yes. Now, the other one that you have over there, mm -hmm. show the camera that's celebrating <laughs> a... Yeah. Hey, hold on up there for a second. Right there. Yeah. Um, that's celebrating a Jewish holiday that yeah. I, I don't think anybody's ever really heard of before. So this is... So next week is the Jewish holiday of Purim. And these are called Humintoshin or Hamintoshin. And during the 5th century, um, the Jews were being, you know, uh, with th with threat by this, you know, this ruler, mm -hmm. and he was defeated, and this is sort of a sweet celebration item of the defeat, and it's called, again, humantashen. It's a pastry uh, pastry dough with apricot. Mm. Actually, traditionally, we do one with, uh, with a, a sweet poppy seed filling mm. and prune filling, you know, so, eat another meal, okay. you want the prune filling, that's always might be a good item. <laughs> pass a couple over I'm going to pass here, them so down okay. here. And now, and this just coincidentally coincides right before Passover. Yeah, well, it's just the you know throughout you know it's just another holiday in the uh, so in the in the sequence of the uh, lunar oh, year. Do you want me to do that? Yeah. Okay, she doesn't want to do that. Yeah, watch your hand. Oh yeah. There we go. There we go. And then hold on, I'm going to jump in here and, we just and the give final you one of touch. Those. Oh, I've already been digging in here, so and I'm going to try one yes. of those little things. Out. Those. And then yeah. of course other things you on. You just break it in half. Break it in half. Uh, like that. Yeah, the other really, uh, New York diner favorites. I see. Ooh, chicken and waffles there. Yum. Yeah, so we have a new menu. We just introduced an, um, uh, an updated menu. And on there are some new breakfast items, lunch items. Uh, of course, you know, dinner, we have some new steaks. Mm -hmm. We've updated our whole bar. So we have, oh, a, yes, you know, we have a full bar, but we have all these new wines and Wonderful. cocktails. We have boozy milkshakes that we're, um, oh, ooh, yes. that we're doing in a big way. Oh. So there's just a lot of uh, and, and the mac brunch, and cheese. The brunch is awesome because, like you said, some people may forget that you have the bar and you have all the breakfast. Yeah, items. we sell more. Oh, and we Crazy. we squeeze every drop of orange juice in the place mm. at the restaurant. 
It sounds great. And as you can see, there's a lot of Italian there, too. And we are going to be making, because it is a, it's National Meatball Day today. And so his secret recipe for meatballs, and we're going to be doing that coming up a little bit later All on right. in the show. Yep. For more information on Max and Louie's New York Diner, just go to our website, salive.com, or you can click that QR code right there on your screen. Don't forget to click the As Seen on SA Live tab when you go to our yeah. website. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Hey, are you planning a trip? Well, we can help you out. This lady can. <laughs> That's right. Today on our Texas tripping, we take you to the outskirts of Austin to a farmhouse brewery where you can stay at cabins. You can go hiking and you can even oh, get cool. up close with baby goats. Take a look. Today on SA Live, we take you to Jester King Brewery. It's about an hour and a half drive north of San Antonio for some beer, food, hiking trails, cabins, and you can even get up close with some adorable goats. And I'm joined now by Jennifer Harlan, the innkeeper here at Jester King Brewery. And uh, there's so many things to do here at Jester King Brewery. It's not just yes. a brewery, right? No, no, we are actually what I would term a destination brewery where you're not just coming out for the beer or just for the food, although both of those are incredible here. Um, we also have five cabins with camping. We've got um, an event hall for private events. We also have our baby goats, which are always a crowd pleaser. Um, you know, so we really do, we're a family friendly, destination that has some of the most unique time, place, people all tied together. Right now, well, we're in the area where the cabins are. Can you describe some of these for me? Absolutely. Each cabin is entirely unique. We have our Ruby cabin, which is our family, you know, kind of more family centric, three bedrooms, two bath, definitely has room and a whole playroom for the kids. Our bunting, which I call our honeymoon cabin. Nice. Um, it's, it sleeps two, full shower, but it's actually where I spent my wedding night um, back in 2018 before we own this place. Um, our Coyote Cabin, which is a historic cabin actually, um, as I mentioned to you earlier, it was built in the early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, we actually moved it over here from East Austin. Um, it has been put together and put back together and is amazing on the inside. It's all reclaimed wood. You can see the nail holes, um, but it actually sleeps 10 people and has its own bathroom. What? It's one of the, probably the most picturesque front porches I've ever seen. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and then our last two um, are kind of a play on the same theme. They're both these great little wooden cabins that are perfect for being quiet in the woods. They sleep four to six people and built for people who want to come enjoy nature and get to be on the grounds, but also get to enjoy everything that's in the area, not just the brewery, but everything out here in the hill country. And speaking of nature, there's 165 acres here that we're on. <laughs> wow. I mean, a lot of room. So, well, you've got your lodging taken care of. Let's say you stay here and then let's move on to talk about uh, the food, also the goats, everything else um, on the property. Absolutely. Our food program um, is probably one of my favorite things to talk about, to be honest with you, because we uh, started off as a pizzeria, but when we took it over, we brought our chefs in, we brought our touch to it. We have some of the best, what I would call the best wood-fired pizza in Austin, and that's not a small claim to make in Austin. <laughs> um, but if you're here on site getting that customized pizza, it's it's just absolutely delicious. And then in the last six months, we've introduced our, our smoked meats program. So now not just pizza, but we're also trying to bring the best of the world in barbecue. Oh you know, so we don't take all small things out here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can smell it, by the way. <laughs> I'm already hungry. On the property, you can explore hiking trails and a goat experience that you can add to your itinerary, getting up close to all these cute little babies. They get to see, feed, you know, help us, you know, maintain the land, maintain the, the grounds for the goats. Um, and also, who doesn't love baby goats? I know. I'm so excited <laughs> to meet those little cuties. And we can't forget about the beer, all brewed here on site. Our beer program has now grown. We, you know, we started off with Farmhouse. For a long time, we had a reputation of being the, the funky beer place, um, <laughs> you know, the sour beer place. But now, you know, we actually have a distributor's license and we brew everything on site that you drink on site. Well, Jennifer, I've enjoyed my time here at Jester King. You two can come visit. They're open Wednesday through Sunday. Just check the website for their hours. We also have all the information on salive.com. Just click the As Seen on SA Live tab. Now it's time to take a bite, all right? Absolutely. You're gonna go with the bread, I'm gonna go with the yeah. pizza.
desk, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what a neat place, though. Yeah, yeah, you can do everything there and very kid friendly as well. And this Friday, they're bringing back their movie nights. They're showing Back to the Future um, at 7 p.m. So they say to arrive early, bring your blankets. And then next week, they have extended spring break hours. So, if, if, by the way, if you are going Friday night, yes, definitely take a couple of blankets because it's going to be very Thank cold. You. Hey, if you want to find their, cal <laughs> their calendar of events, uh, just head over to SALive.com, click on the As Seen on SA Live tab, or just snap that QR code right <laughs> there Wait, on your yeah. screen. <laughs> It's a wild Wednesday. Can you guess who this is? He looks like a turtle that can't swim. We reveal the cute critter and how you can meet him yourself. It's next on SA Live.